were Arsenal close to hitting that number with the £70 million? I and mean, if they wanted half the player, top, top class player, and, and he yeah. has the potential to be anything he wants <laughs> to be. Mm, because Moses Caicedo was another example, you know, just in the January transfer window that just, just went, Chelsea bidded, I don't know, £55 million. And Arsenal obviously built bid seventy million pounds, and I was doing some research. So, so, so they say. So they say. Obviously, you're the man. I noticed that. I wasn't nodding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, what's the process? Because I've done some research, and I saw that Tony Bloom trusts you to have the number in the mind of what it would take to get a player out of the club. Were Arsenal close to hitting that number with the seventy million pound, or was it sort of like a moral? principle at stake so it's not the money it's about principle only if they wanted half the player um you know <laughs> <laughs> um, no i mean joking aside we, we 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 never provide numbers so it always sort of amuses us when we see numbers in the media because they've not come from us and, no so i'm talking about yeah. internally that tony has a price on each one of the players that if if this number's hit then we've got to consider doing business yeah that that, that i think that's the same in any business where the the owner will always have a an understanding of what his assets are worth um and of course that can vary you know for us in January, selling Moises wasn't a good move because, first of all, he was one of our best players in the first half of the season. And secondly, we were in a great position in the league. We were still in the FA Cup. We still had a lot of football to play. Um, and we want to try and achieve our best ever finish in, in the Premier League. And if we if we do achieve that, there's a, there's a chance that we could qualify for European competition. So the stakes for us in the second half of this season were higher than ever. And Moises is a big part of that. But he's also a young player who's still learning his game. Um, he's in a far away country from, from, from where he was born. And therefore, we also have a responsibility to try and do the best for the player long term as well as in the short term for us. And we felt that that was best served by keeping Moises with us, trying to do the best we can for the rest of this season. And then what will be in the future will be. And Moises is a top, top class player. And, and he yeah. has the potential to be anything he wants to be, <laughs> anywhere he wants to be. And um, therefore, this isn't, this isn't, you know, the one and only transfer window when Moises is going to be a popular uh, attraction for other clubs. And I think, you know, when we sat down with him and talked about that, and once all of the heat of the window had gone out and we were able to agree a new contract with him, set them back down. And as you've seen in the last few games, he's beginning now to get back to that level that he was at in the first half. And he's such a lovely kid. He's such a lovely uh, person as well as a terrific footballer. You know, we're really happy that, you know, he settled back down. And as I said, his chance will come in the future to be whatever he wants to be. And uh, we're all very, very confident that will happen for him. And again, I talk about leadership. I like the way Brighton sort of got ahead of the situation in terms of saying, listen, stay away from training for a few days, come back into the fold because... As we've seen in sort of big corporations over the last three, four days, you know, maybe leadership hasn't been the best. I think we all know what we're talking about. So, yeah, uh, that was commendable. Yeah, you have to, sometimes you have to take charge of the situation for, for the young person here. You know, it's very easy, I think, sometimes because there's so much profile for footballers, so much interest in their lives and what they're doing and their careers. That it's easy to forget that at 20, 21 years of age, you know, you don't have a lot of life experience. Yeah, yeah. You, you need people around that can say, look, you know what? It's probably best if you just have a few days off. Just take you out of the, the, the spotlight. Take the heat away from you. Let the people around you that have to manage these situations do that. You just relax. Focus on having a break. And then when the transfer windows close, back to training, back to playing. Focus again on your football. And it's not easy sometimes if you're 20, 21 years of age to, to see that that's the best option at, at that time. And so you need someone to almost take charge of that. And of course, agents are sometimes in the best place to, to advise in that situation. And sometimes they're not because they've also got, in, in, in many cases, a motivation yeah. or an interest in the transfer happening. And therefore, they're not always the most independent judges in, in that situation. Um, but we all have to coexist. We all have to work together to, to, to make these things work. And um, for Moises, we felt we took the right course of action. And as I said, he's playing really well again. So we're, we're delighted.